Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is uh, we're getting a little late start here, but um, we're uh, having an open staff meeting, and it's not going well yet. But it will, right? It will go. Fine. The technology is not going well. Yes. There you go. Um. So how have you been? <laughs> Chris, why don't you start off? You were talking about research. Why don't you talk about that a little bit? Sure. Where, where, what are you guys working on? Uh, for the past few weeks, uh, we had a spring break of about 10 days thrown in the middle of things, but um, for the past three weeks of class, uh, we've been doing research papers, um, and they are, uh, you know, they had to find a topic that they were interested about that was researchable, and um, then I use it as a way to kind of um, teach uh, search skills, for one thing. And then, uh, you know, finding information in different places, some things behind password-protected sites, some places just out in the open. And then, you know, they talk about the relative merits and drawbacks of each of those things. Um, and then what they do is uh, each week they write an update on Youth Voices about what they found out that week. <coughs> so um, this week they're doing research in EBSCO, which in Utah anyway is freely available to all high school students. So um, I think it's in most places. I think. I think so. Yeah, it seems to be a pretty. It's a pretty big company. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so they have been just um, in that database because it's pretty big. My point was trying to learn how to use some search filters and that kind of thing. But sometimes we just search the open web um, as well. And uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. I think uh, the writing that they're doing seems. I think I'm getting the sense that they care about their topics, which is really good. I mean, they're seniors and. They're going to graduate in, um, you know, about a month, which means effectively, as far as school goes, they've got like four weeks <laughs> tops. Mm -hmm. So trying to get them engaged in in things is, you know, some people would say that's kind of a challenge. Um, so, Chris, yeah. yeah, no, and have they been? Yeah, I think so. Um, um, you know, it's like I said, if you're a month out and uh, these kids all of them pretty much are going to college uh, maybe some are gonna take a year off and then go to college but you know so that's they've all decided now or they're in the end stages of that so it's kinda easy to transition into the next thing nobody's, so I think, nobody's studying gap year this year <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think somebody might be a couple of them might be doing gap years but um, mm -hmm. um, the, the thing about what I like about Youth Voices in that context is that uh, it's social research, you know, that they're talking to other people. And like in Dawn's class, they um, my students sent out some research surveys and um, Dawn's class responded, so that gave them more feedback. And I think feedback and conversation is probably one of the ingredients to make it as engaging as you can at this stage in my seniors academic careers go. Mm -hmm. So Don, how did your students, they, they just found the surveys and did them? Yeah. Chris, is this the first time you've done that and are you doing, are they doing like statistical things or what? Sorry, um, I asked you a question Don then I... Maybe, yeah, we'll hear from Don. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Chris, do you, well, do you want to answer that question, or do you want me to? Just... Go ahead. Okay. So I think Chris sent out a link, and so I sent them to the link, and then they p were picking and choosing which um, surveys they wanted to respond to, but it was very good for us because they are going to be headed into a smaller freshman version of what you're describing in terms of research. They don't know it yet, but... Um, they were looking at different I, different topics and were excited about it and, and responded and so it was good. How are you setting up the research? 
Uh, oh, you're talking to Don still. Don, yeah. Me? Oh. Yeah, for your we, freshman. We are, we have, we've been looking at um, text through a cultural lens and asking a lot of questions. So actually a couple days ago we analyzed food wrappers and talked about what it said about culture. And then students are going to be using, um, reading literature circle books and their questions are going to come out of culture related to reading that book through a cultural lens. And then so they get to pick their question from what they're reading in that way. Shantanu, I don't know if you know Don Reed. Don Reed, Shantanu, hello. Hello. Meet you, hello. We were all late, Shantanu, sorry. Yeah. And I think Chris Sloan, you know. Mm -hmm. So Shantanu, your students have been doing research as well, right? I mean, that yes, seems uh, to be where we're circling around. Yes, my uh, ninth grade advisory, one of the things that uh, I've been doing as uh, curriculum is having them uh, learn how to do research, uh, learn how to do research essays uh, by uh, choosing questions, doing some research, and then posting their results on, uh, on Youth Voices. So and, uh, right on the front page, there's uh, somebody who's, who's uh, investigating whether to live in Nigeria or not? Yes, uh, that was, uh, I think that, that was put up just today. Uh, and they didn't mention the Boko Haram at all yet, so am I saying Yeah, I was, uh, <laughs> I, I, I haven't gotten around to reading it yet, but uh, uh -huh. okay. <laughs> I, I, I was wondering if, if they were going to mention Boko Haram when I saw the title. Mm -hmm. So how do, you, how do you have them select, I mean, is this okay to go with this? It seems like, I mean, my kids aren't, they're, we're working on Black Lives Matter, but we're, we're not doing any kind of, other kind of research, but um, stay on this focus for a second. I, there you go. So, Shantanu, I was just about to ask you, and you guys should, should take this uh, over a little bit, because um, I'm a little frazzled. But the, um, how do you have them find resources? What's your process? <coughs> well, uh... Uh, finding uh, research questions or finding research resources for uh, uh, for their uh, uh, well uh, it for finding questions uh, I started out at the beginning of the year by having them do the uh, ten self and ten world questions mm -hmm. uh, and then start to develop them and then uh, uh, at various points I uh, gave them uh, you know I. Uh, change it up a little bit where I've given them research <laughs> questions to uh, work with, and uh, and uh, this last one I I had them uh, just uh, pick a, any topic that they were interested in and uh, and uh, do a research essay on that topic. Uh, as a, uh, in terms of getting resources, uh, what I've had them do is uh, simply go to the New York Public Library. Uh, website, uh, go to the uh, their uh, periodical database and just search through that database for for scholarly sources. Uh, I told them uh, one of the uh, you know uh, for each assignment uh, one of the requirements was a certain number of scholarly sources that had to be uh, part of the. Uh, uh, Part of the number of uh, sources that they had to include in their uh, final essay. Mm -hmm. So, can I ask? Can I ask about social reading? So, I, I really want to get to that. So, because I, I, I kind of feel like Chantanu's when I read your kids' stuff, it's kind of amazing, but I don't. Again, what I, what, I, what I think we really struggle with is actually working on topics together. Is there any way to do that more? <laughs> and, and by social reading, I mean, can we imagine kids using the same text and annotating it together? And, and do we care if they do or not? Because <laughs> we can do that. 
And I keep trying to set that up, but it doesn't seem to happen. Right. Uh... John, you're shaking your head. Or... Well, I think I, I'm excited about it. I haven't figured out exact, you know, just like all of us, we haven't figured out exactly how how to make it work. I think it's possible. I with Youth Voices Live, I think that's been sort of the start for me to figure out how to get my students commenting there and then bringing that into the conversation. But I know that earlier this year you said that now they can also annotate each other's posts, and we haven't played with that yet. Or they yeah. can respond that way. Yeah, I was so thinking... Go ahead, Chris. What, what are you thinking? Well, uh, Don was in the middle of an I was yeah. thinking statement first. Go ahead, Don. Oh, that wasn't me. That was me. Karen was Karen. saying I was thinking. <laughs> I was thinking also about Youth Voices Live because that seems, I mean, one of the challenges I think with any kind of coordinated activity is just the coordination piece and like are people doing the same sort of things. But Youth Voices Live is a place where we have like a common topic and we do have several classes engaging around something. And it seems like there haven't been a lot of student comments on the annotated things that have been set up and I don't know I mean I know it's we're like just getting back into that but I'd be interested to hear from Chris and Don like what are the you know is there a way to make it easier or what the issues are um, from my perspective I think one of the things with um, choosing a topic to have common reading is that the students own research shifts so quickly that you know like uh, one kid you know I just read a post on the pay on the front page about uh, I forget I've read a bunch in the last little bit but um, you know I started out researching this and now I'm researching that uh, and it does kind of morph as all good inquiry does and so um, when, you know, if we choose something to annotate, like let's say one of us adults chooses, um, sometimes it's just another thing for them. And, and my guys, they seem to have a lot going on. And so I'm always careful to ask them to do something else um, because they get overwhelmed. Um, they're so close to the tipping point. Uh, and they balance their lives really well, but they have a lot going on. And so one thing that I was kind of curious about with Don, um, when you were thinking about having your students talk or, or you know, look at a, a smaller research project, and I think you said something like they were looking at some of the posts on Youth Voices. Um, you know, like I wonder about building on someone else's ideas, like what if, um, let's, I'll just look at the front page right now. So, um should death penalty be used to punish violent criminals? You know, like maybe one of, that's not a student of Don's, but maybe someone in Don's class too. or my class, because it's not one of mine either. But it's Chantanu's. Yeah. So, um, Conveniently. Right? So, like if those students, <laughs> if they found something and then read somebody's posts on Youth Voices about what they've found out, because mine... And it sounds like Shanton News, you are kind of doing the same thing where they're documenting what they're finding through their research yeah. as they research. Um, you know, like following someone else's trail concurrently is the trick, too. Um, like, is that person still writing on youth voices? Um, seems like then there may be the possibility of doing like a hypothesis kind of. Uh, and I don't know hypothesis. Um, but it sounds like if we come across something that someone's researching right now that seems interesting, you know, maybe that's a point of intersection that we could possibly, you know, students could possibly annotate together. And that was actually something that I was planning to do next week was have the, the kids in my advisory uh, uh, actually uh, look at research that other kids have done that they had posted on Youth Voices and uh, respond to that by doing more research and uh, and uh, using that research in their comments. Uh, 
on on the addresses. So, uh, so to to bring more research to the conversation, that was uh, one of the things that I was uh, uh, thinking uh, about. Uh, so what what I'll do is like um, every time they do a post, they have to comment on two others. Um, so what I try to have them do also then is like in their comment, can they add a resource that they think that writer might be able to use? Right. And I think that's the beginning of something pretty interesting. Then it's up to the writer to find that comment and and then read that too. That's where so, it can break down. Right. So 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 if we can get uh, both of our classes to. Uh, respond to each other's uh, research with their own resources. Uh, they can start to explore that conversation uh, using uh, uh, using research that they have done. Uh, so, and so it becomes collective research. So then the trick in there is to get annotations on that document. Um, by the same two students, mm -hmm. I think. Um, but I don't even know. But but I wonder if I value that kind of close reading and that annotating of text more than I should sometimes, <laughs> because because in in the end you you like you know you grab a quote or something from a from a text and, and you throw that in your paper, right? I, so, in other words, is the research process the same as the close reading process? Uh, Do you understand what I'm asking? Like, Chris, I see your kids, I mean, I don't see, they quote every, every once in a while, a little bit, but they're not, like, going in depth in the text, I don't think. That's they're, because a lot of times what I, their task is to summarize an article. Mm -hmm. uh, because I'm trying to have them leave a trail of, you know, their thinking as they go. Now, um, yeah, is that close reading? No, whatever we want to call it, but yeah. Well, I mean, it's Detailed not as, thought, yeah. It's not as close of a read as um, they could do. I'll put it that way. I mean, it's I'm trying to have them, I guess, uh, you know, summary. Just, I'll, like today, for instance, they, I said go into this database and, and summarize three uh, articles that you read. Now that's actually in a you know in a 75 minute period. That's kind of that's a lot to do. And then there's you know social things that happen too. They're in a room with each other, and so there's going to be someone finds something, let's say. And and that sparks a conversation about that topic, but then those kids, that's some time that they're not doing close reading. So I don't know if my pedagogy is engendering, at least in class, the way I'm setting that up. I don't know that it's engendering like a really close read, which doesn't mean we can't do it, but um, I think that's maybe a separate, like quiet time assignment that they would do outside of class, the way at least I operate. My classes, there are periods of, you know, extended silence where they're working, but there's also, you know, there's periods of chatter a lot of times around the topic. Mm -hmm. So I like the idea of uh, annotated, close annotating reading. Um, the trick is finding something that they both care about enough to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one way I think is like to try to one activity could be look at some posts on Youth Voices and, and rank them as, as far as like how personally interested you are in them so that maybe they could try to arrive inductively at something that's that they have a stake in. I don't know how to do it exactly. That'd I always think way. of current events for stuff like that. Like if there's mm -hmm. court testimony that's really compelling and something that particularly lends itself to that close reading. I mean, the other, the other upcoming thing will be the elections. And I think kids are really good at taking the text of particularly debates and really doing a close 
picking apart or finding other resources or whatever, and that's always interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm trying. I'm uh, trying to uh, have the kids uh, uh, do. Uh, you know, uh, right now, I'm uh, doing a weekly thing called Talking Tuesday, where uh, I try to get the kids to uh, select articles, and uh, each week we would, uh, uh, I would have at least one kid bring in an article. We would, uh, I'd make copies, and they would read the article, and then on Tuesday we would have a discussion about that article, and I've been. When do they bring the article again? Hmm? When do they bring the article? Uh, usually I would have them uh, some, uh, give me the article uh, by Friday. I would mm -hmm. make copies and give, it, uh, give, them, give it to them to read on Monday, and then we would discuss the article on Tuesday. Uh, and uh, I've been trying, uh, you know, uh, the last uh, few months I've been trying to get them to produce the articles rather than me giving them the articles. Uh, it's not always uh, successful because uh, the students that I designate don't always uh, select an article, so I would have to uh, use an article myself. Uh, so, Shelton, go ahead. Do you, do you want to make a point about that? I just so uh, and uh, I've been trying to have them have a discussion that is grounded in the text of the article, and it's I've been having difficulties uh, getting them to ground the discussion in the text, uh, and uh, because because they like to uh, go far away from the text and talk about uh, uh, different things uh, related to the topic of the text, but not grounded in the text. So uh, you know, and I've been actually talking to them about doing this, uh, and I haven't been uh, quite successful yet, so I haven't figured out how to get them to uh, ground their discussion more in the text, uh, because they start out uh, uh, quoting the text, but then they start quoting each other, and the uh, I ideas that they're talking about uh, become uh, only peripherally related to the subject of the of, uh, the, uh, te of the, the text, and therefore it doesn't uh, it, it quickly becomes ungrounded in the text itself. Uh, so, uh, so it's uh, something I'm I'm struggling with. Um, one thing that I think is really um, promising about what Shantanu does is. Um, you know, having putting the onus on somebody else besides us to come up with an article, right? Because yeah. um, it can break down. Because I think as teachers, we already have a lot of stuff going on. So to find something that you know everybody or somebody has a stake in is, you know, that's not easy. But then, like to say to a student, at least, well, you do. Um, but see, like if I was aware of Chantanu's class saying, like, here's our common reading for this week, then, you know, it's possible that if I were better at communicating that, that then possibly my students could join that conversation, right? Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things I was thinking of is something I do in my media classes um, is the KQED Do Now, which was kind of on our list. And one of the things there that's really nice about that is that somebody else is putting together resources for me that are revolving around common or uh, current events. So, okay. for example, um, I'll put this week's um, thing in the chat room, um, which was um, their their question was, "Does a nuclear deal with uh, Iran make sense?" And if you go to that page. Um, you know, there's some explanatory material um, on the top of it, and then there's an introduction, right? And then there's usually there's a media piece. In this case, it's an NPR story about it. But then that what they always do is put an article um, on the page too. So like it, under the more resources, if you see that there's Iran deal uh, agrees to detail nuclear outline, 
<laughs> you know, like, something like that strikes me as, you know, that's the kind of thing. I'm not saying it has to be that, but an article that's tied to current events that maybe the onus isn't always on busy teachers to come up with has potential because it's already kind of in the news. And Don, you use Do Now too, right? Uh-huh. Right. Um, do you use it every week kind of thing? Is it like a ritual? Not yet. We, um, we use it sporadically, but in, in terms of weekly responses, but I, I'd like to move in that direction as I think about the future. And then we, there's other work that we've done with Do Now, but the, I like the idea of conversations with um, annotations, because I was looking, because we have a tab on Youth Voices that has a connection to Do Now, too. Right. Do you know that, Chris? There's a tab that brings you to Do Now? On How long has that been there? Oh, about six months. No way. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. No, about three months. <laughs> yeah, okay. I guess, you know, you get so used to the interface. Yes, it's sticking out at me now. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, and, yeah, so, so let me, you know, um, Jeremy Dean, who who's moving from, uh, um, <laughs> from genius to hypothesis is going to be on um, in a couple of weeks to talk about hypothesis um, once he figures out what's going on there. But um, it's a pretty slick uh, integration, it seems to me. Um, it's, um, and it's slick in that you we could we could agree that we're going to do the do now article. There's always one article you said. Is it yeah? There's at least one. It is? one yeah. Okay. Uh, or, I mean, sometimes it's a multimedia piece too. Well, there's always a multimedia piece, and there's always at least one, usually New York Times article. Okay. Would it make sense to yeah. do um, I? a couple of youth live sessions around the do now stuff if you guys are already doing that makes sense for me mm-hmm. but i i guess but what's wrong with asking questions i like that too there's nothing wrong with it i mean i yeah. like it too it's just that it's if everybody has a lot to do and there's a common thing already that two people are doing who are participating in youth voices live maybe that would be easier to not have to fit perhaps in well, the thing about ask big questions right. that I think my kids sometimes run into is that it's it's not always at the forefront. I mean, maybe it should be. Obviously, the question, you know, sh- how do you say no or whatever to a bunch of people that say yes too much. You know, it should just stand out. But um, the the and I, it sounds like I'm you know like doing a promo for do now, but. Um, you know, one of the advantages is, like, it's already got a little buzz about it because if they pay attention to current events, they've heard it or something. Um, but mm-hmm. th- there's nothing wrong with the big questions. It's just that sometimes my kids... But it feels like extra to your kids, you're saying. A lot of times, yeah. Yeah. Whereas they don't do now already. Yeah, some of them, because I have some kids in English and media. Mm-hmm. So again, I think it's a nice choice, right? But mm-hmm. but then we don't have connection. <laughs> it's like we we spin out too much. That's what's hard. Mm-hmm. And and really, I mean, it's ironic. And I'm gonna be quiet because I think Dawn has something to say. But to me, like, it's ironic because like. You know, we should be talking about how to say no, because if you talk to my students and probably everybody else's, it's like they've said yes to a lot, and um, they're saying no to to that question. <laughs> <laughs> Don, what were you thinking between I, those two, and and can we? Yeah, or what were you thinking? Sure, I. You know, I very much like do now, but I also like big questions. I think my students are really enjoying big questions right now. Mm -hmm. Um, But interestingly enough, I think we started with a big question that 
sometimes they lead us to some of the current events. Like, seems like a few months ago we were talking about um, a big question, but it led to talking about Black Lives Matter a little bit. Mm -hmm. The privilege thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And it also... And, we... and the, the no question, if you follow through with who they're connecting with, leads to, it's, you know, leads to issues of rape and, um, and so forth as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, by the way, yeah. my kid, the one who's really fired up about Friday, his youth voices, I'll put his username in, he's been doing rape culture... Uh, and the the reason he'll you'll spot his post because he does he spells rape with an at sign because our filters at school like he can't work on his stuff at school wow. with the word rape in the title so um, he'll he's going to be one of the people talking on Friday for what it's worth. Cool. That's worth a lot. Yeah, but I, but like I didn't know he was coming though. So that's another thing. Like how do we? Let each I was going to tell you tonight. Okay. Well, that's good. Well, just did. <laughs> that's, that's a did. long story. Long, they're seniors. They're busy. They're not always there. No, I, I totally get it. And I also, I mean, I, that, that, both, both that, that, like, we have our echoes, you know, uh, our ecologies within our own classes, and that that notion of summarizing three articles, like uh, those are all valuable practices. I don't want to, you know. So, but Shantanu, um, uh, how, how do you feel about do you, do you know do now at all, and do you think that could be a shift? Well, I was just looking at it. Uh, yeah. I, I think it's uh, very interesting. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, right now. Uh, uh, I've just uh, uh, gotten a uh, directive from my principal that the next two weeks we There's will be technology. Sorry. <laughs> uh, focusing on the uh, New York City uh, HIV AIDS uh, curriculum. So uh, uh, we're going to have to. Do, I'm going to have to do something about that instead uh, of, uh, mm -hmm. of anything. To do now. Uh, yeah, but I think uh, I think I can uh, uh, use this to uh, spark a uh, uh, collaborative research project for the kids. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I'd, ha I'd have to take a look at uh, what's going on uh, a little bit more in depth before I. So I want to ask this one more time, though, because I, I'm thinking of it again. So as you said, collaborative research project, I'm thinking, but does that take away from the individual finding your own passion, finding your own interest kind of thing? And or, you know, Don, your kind of wonderful connection between with the literature groups and so forth. How do you do that, those kinds of things, and do this collaborative stuff? Is it too much? <laughs> Are we setting ourselves up? Or is it worth doing in some way? Or can we try to figure out how to make it all work? Well, I would say if my if my passion is your passion, all is well. That's true. <laughs> no, but I, like there, I think there are kids who circle around the same topics a lot, mm -hmm. and so it's not a stretch to say to someone, "Hey." This kid, I just put his youth, youth voices uh, uh, username there, I believe. Um, you know, like, I'm sure there are other people who are interested in that same topic. It's finding them and then making sure you're at the same pace with them. Yeah, so Karen, what do you mean by the tribes thing? But Because uh, I was thinking that this is... It sounds to me like the issue is about surfacing people's interests right, so right. we know what's going on. Well, so Monica yeah. always talks about like finding your tribe and connecting with people who are interested in the same thing you're interested in. And it seems like like if there was a way to connect people who are interested, like their passion is the same topic, then all this stuff just naturally flows because you're like crazy about it and you want to talk to people and you want to annotate together and do all this stuff. And right. then it's not its not one more thing. It's like the thing you have to do. 
I wish Monica were here. <laughs> Chris, where are you posting this stuff? Because I'm missing it. What? Um, in the EdTech chat? No, oh, it's gone. Oh. I I'll, think. I'll, it's still there for you. It's, it still exists, but oh. it's not on the page. I'm not I'll there. Um, put it anyway. in the okay. Google chat Sorry. thing here. Um, I mean, is so there like I... a topic or two that we know that like there's a handful of kids that are like really well, into? I mean, that goes back to almost Dawn's point originally about like if they're going to do a mini research project, maybe one activity is like look at what other students are researching on youth voices and and let's see what um, strikes your fancy. And, um, you know, then there could be a local activity where you do some kind of, you know, put them on a board and vote. Or I mean, you could take right. it a lot of different ways. But um, one, I think the first thing is to maybe use that as a resource, you know, instead of always, like, and I do this myself, you know, like think of a question on your own that interests you. Um, you know, maybe some of it should be, Here's a set, like we do inquiry writing all the time on youth voices, so look for a question that's your question okay. and um and then m sometimes my kids stumble upon that, and then it's a person who's graduated or whatever, and they aren't active right now, and so I always think like, darn, I wish I would have got that in time to steer them to someone who is active, even if I say, like, by the way, you know, some of these people look at the date and that kind of thing. They don't always catch it. So but, being, be, being able to focus the search better um, to active users is something yeah. that yeah. we need to on the wish list. But I think, you know, an activity like find a question that's your question could be kind of cool on Youth Voices, and I've never done it, actually. <coughs> So this is kind of a weird left field question, but like the topics they're doing research on, I know they came up with them and they're but how many of them do you think are like really a passion of theirs? Like something that's gonna go beyond the project and beyond school and you well, know, I'm thinking I, of things like baseball or manga or I don't know what, but Well, I I mean I can think of and it's because it's on my mind because I just brought it up, but the two students who are doing stuff about uh, rape, um, you know, that's been, um, they have connections to the topic, and the one girl, she was like, oh, I was on a college visit, and I asked them about their um, policy, and, and she, I forget what school it was, but she said, you know, like, they were really upfront about their statistics about campus crime, but they claim that other schools aren't. So I know that she is doing a topic that um, she really cares about because she came back and talked to me about how it impacted her, you know, in this college visit. And the the Sam who will be on, um, I know he cares a lot about the topic and I can't remember exactly what all was in that, but that's what he wanted to do from the start and he, I know he does have a stake in it. Um, and I guess I can backwards answer that. I know when kids that I, I know a lot of them have abandoned questions that they don't care about, so mm -hmm. I feel like the odds are better that they're doing something they do care about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Would any of them be, this is kind of a weird segue, but I, I keep thinking about that conversation we've had about MOOCs for kids or getting like small groups of kids who are interested in something. And I think the big the the um, the big questions and the do now is an attempt to have a version of that, right? Uh huh. Uh -huh yeah, I'm thinking about summer and just doing like are are there kids on Youth Voices who would who are working on things that they would be motivated to keep working on in the summer if there was some coordination of that? Or not really? I'd have to ask mine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great idea. I'd have to ask as well. Because I feel like if we could just get a small group of kids doing something like that, then we'd have like a model that maybe could spread. I don't know. It's a possibility. Huh. <coughs> 
So playing with hypothesis for a second, um, okay, do do sign up for it. Um, it's it's there's a a little it's called via via dot hypothesis with the dot is at the end, right? Um, and you can throw any any PDF or any um, any website into that, and it creates a, a way to annotate. Then, um, the what's little, the URL again? Um, <laughs> well, the, you can just find it at Hypothesis. Also, you just uh -huh. leave off the is at the end and put dot is instead. So h y p o t h e s dot is. Now the trick would be the trick would be that there's a way to tag your and I wish there, and we'll talk to them. Maybe they can help us with this. But if if you tag youth voices, two words, youth voices, then it comes to a stream which is linked under the um, under the member home. There's youth voices hypothesis. So that's a way for us to find each other's hypothesis, right? You're looking confused already, Chris. Um, well, I guess <laughs> my question goes way back, and that is, yeah. I still have to know what hypothesis is. I guess, I mean, I can see it's social annotation, but um, I mean, I need to spend a little time. That's about as far as I've gotten with it. So, I mean, and I've been I've been kind of uh, just seeing how it works uh, with with many of your students. So your student will put up a uh, is it one up now? I think there probably is. <laughs> put up a post and say, uh, here's the article I read, mm -hmm. and I'll add the hypothesis link in. Right. Um, and it'll take so the uh, yeah I've the, clicked the, on those. The anorexia one, right? Mm-hmm. From the front page, if you if you click on that link, you there. Um, you doing this? It says annotate the study together, right? At the I'm, bottom of her post. My network's a little slow right um, now. Now yours is. <laughs> and then what comes up in the upper right hand corner is uh, three little boxes. You open up the box, and then, or you don't even have to. You can just highlight something, and and, um, and you can begin to annotate it, right? But again, there there are, there are a couple of things. One is, is this is this source is this something compelling enough for enough students to want to annotate this together, right? How do we find it together? Do we value that kind of, um, you know, writing about every paragraph, thinking through things, um, that kind of close annotation of text? I'm being very specific because I know close reading has all sorts of other implications. Um, you know, just to say, some of us valued that kind of annotation long before. Common Core took over the word close reading, but um, the uh, right. I, I mean, I think we do, um, but it's tricky to to coordinate. That, no, I, I was. That, yeah, go ahead, Don. I was thinking about how we've sort of had ebbs and flows this year with social reading. Like I was even thinking back to the beginning of the year when we did my name and we were doing something similar. But I was also thinking about what Shanti was saying about the self and world questions. Mm -hmm. I, I too start, started my year out with having students develop their profiles with those questions that although it might not be possible right now as we think about next year, maybe it is that they are being, find, finding more articles along the way and sharing some of those and annotating with hypothesis, I can see the possibilities for it. Um, it. I think it hones some of their even thinking through of what questions they'll eventually explore in their research later on in the year. I like that. You know, I mean, James A. Bean's whole description of it, and if we can go back and read that together sometime, 
Um, there would be a text to look at. I think it's called democratic schooling. Yeah, the, um, the it's a middle school he takes, and, and they develop their whole curriculum. But there, there's there's a really important piece where they look at each other's questions, and they 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 determine themes together, um, and then develop kind of new questions from those themes that that are overarching questions. Um, what would seem similar on Youth Voices to me that we don't do um, is maybe rethink the channels every year, right? I don't, mm. I don't know if every year. But if we, if if kids could identify and own a channel and say, you know, my channel is about I don't know, saying no or something, then then they could propose texts into that channel and and be kind of connected. Um, that's, so that's cool. I love that. I, I had a kid ask about the logic of the channels uh, the other day, so I'll have to follow up with him. On that. <laughs> The logic is, are there any teachers here who are willing to take on this channel? And those teachers aren't with us anymore. But. Yeah, but I thought that, like, I didn't follow up with this question. I like, that's kind of an interesting oh, thing I see for a kid mean, to say. Oh, I see you why, yeah. Uh -huh. It would be interesting if we could, uh, in the next revision of uh, Youth Voices, if we could have uh, students create their own channels and manage those channels themselves so that they uh, have the ability to uh, personalize it and, uh, you know, uh, direct it to work. Yeah, and then there might be like a mailbox somewhere there that in that channel, that here's an article that I think we should all read, right? And then right. kind of connect. That's neat. Yeah. All right. Oh, the, enough ideas? <laughs> so, play with hypothesis yourself. Sign up for it. See how that works. You know, I mean, there is there is certainly a, too many things, and and I like all of them. And you know, I mean, but I know it gets confusing. There's hypothesis. There's still genius. Um, I think it plays lots of roles. Um, it, it, Jessica Forbes was going to be with us, and and she couldn't join us. But the um, the Raven project she did, right? Uh, um, her you may have seen some of those. They did remixes of the Raven, um, and then I was I'm sort of asked, kind of wondering because there there's an interesting Raven page in Genius. So there's there's stuff like that that, that I embedded on youthvoices.net slash raven. Um, and then her students' work is there too. So that, that was a lot I just said right there. But, <laughs> but just to say, um, automatically on Youth Voices, and this is just for the future, um, and, and I'll shut up, uh, if, you can, if you can get your students work attached to a mission then the um, then hypothesis works automatically on that page right so you can mm -hmm. annotate any youth voices page now um, and those annotations go to the same account as long as you're logged in as if you're annotating out on the web too so all of that feels kind of smooth to me um, but we can keep talking about that <laughs> So I charge you to play with hypothesis and see what you can do with it. <laughs> and so great. Um, it sounds like we have something happening this Friday, at least with Utah and Michigan. Is that right? Yeah. And I don't know if what's happening with Joe yet, but we'll see what happens. Well, she said things. she couldn't do it because there was some conflict. Oh, I didn't realize. I didn't. There realize. was. Yeah, she wrote back. Okay. Some state thing or. Okay, that was this. One. Okay. Yeah. So, and, uh, all right. So we'll see you Friday, the two of you. <laughs> and Shantanu, if, is that is that time ever work for you? It would be one fifty. Uh, one fifty is just uh, as uh, my classes are uh, finishing up for the day. So uh, okay, it's not really uh, good for me, in, uh, and especially on Friday. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Everyone All wants right. to get out. 
So I babbled here at the end a little bit. Anybody else want to say anything quickly, and then we'll let each other go? Yeah. <laughs> Good, Chris. <laughs> um, so I think a couple of things that seem generative to me. One is um, the idea of, I mean, you mentioned it, Paul, with Bean, and I keep coming back to it with uh, Don's class, that, you know, we've got this large body of inquiry question documentation. So finding questions that are my questions by people who are currently active on Youth Voices seems like a good place to start. Then the other thing with hypothesis is I'm interested in when they're on because one thing that strikes me about just initially looking at it is my kids, they really, they do close reading to me. They cite it and everything. But hypothesis might be a place where they could highlight stuff for their final, um, I still make them do a final research paper. Um, mm -hmm. you know, if nothing else, they could highlight the parts that are important to them and other people could see what they found important and there may be, if that question is my question, there may be some talk about you know, why that part stood out. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You can pretty easily copy and paste from Hypothesis into another document too. So, you know, it, it, it gives you your quote kind of automatically. Yeah, so that's why I'd like to just hear. I'd like to, you know, be part of that or hear that conversation because mm -hmm. it's easy to say, but um, if, you know, I haven't done it, so I... I'm pretty sure it's in three weeks, by the way. Okay. okay. Just <laughs> nice. Don, thank you yeah. for joining. Yeah. Thank, yeah, thank you for having me. I am excited about the possibility of the talking with students about the summer and also thinking about structuring things for next year so that there's some more intention on my part in terms of helping them get at the questions to build on what Chris is talking about, helping them to get at putting information forward that can be annotated together. Um, and I'm sure like starting to play with some of those things this year, but maybe thinking about even that the purpose and the movement that I would do to get some of those routines in there um, to be able to build on all the all the points we've been talking about from do now to their own questions and articles that they would bring. Yeah, and I keep thinking that we need to learn more from you about how you do book groups and connect those to issues too. That, that feels like if we could figure out a technology version of that, that would be really useful. Yeah, that would be great. I'd be yeah. up for that. Yeah, I'd like to hear that too. <laughs> Shantanu, any thoughts and then Karen? <laughs> uh, I don't know. At this point, I am just trying to uh, get my kids to uh, uh, start to think seriously about uh, what... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, what, about the things that they're reading, so uh, I need to uh, you know, have them uh, spend more time uh, actually uh, reading through a whole article and uh, and going through it and uh, being able to discuss it. So uh, that's. Uh, it's a life skill. I mean, we none of us do that very well. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. Karen. It's true. Um, I don't know. I really like the idea of exploring connections across the ten questions and really forming mm -hmm. some sort of ongoing connections across people. Yeah. Cool. Thank you all. Sorry about the franticness, and I'll fix the page, and we'll get it all together. <laughs> um, I, if you don't mind, I'm going to try to invite some newish people to join us even next week. I think we'd. St I mean, it, I I was happy to have this conversation with you all tonight too, but um, I want to get the new folks involved here too. And there are some coming on, so we're going to try to organize around all that. 
if that makes some sense, and yeah. I'll let you know. Um, we are here every Wednesday night uh, as a channel of the World Bridges Network, edtechtalk.com. Um, and um, Dave Cormier and Jeff Lebo set that up. Thank you all, and good night. Thank you. Night. Thanks. See you guys on Friday. See ya. Yeah.